What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Golf Magic channel and welcome back to another equipment review video. But instead, it's a bit of a twist. Now, we've had over 450 videos on our YouTube channel, but there's one brand that we've never done before, and that is Vice Golf. Now, Vice Golf do golf balls, and they do a lot of other accessories as well, but what I'm gonna focus on over the next few weeks is their 2020 range of golf balls. Now, they've got quite a few, so I'm gonna test each one, see which one's right for your game, and how they compare against the big brand competitors. This is gonna be interesting. First one I'm gonna get into is the Vice Pro Plus. So, the Vice Pro Plus golf ball. Who is the target market for this one? So, this four-piece golf ball is the upper market golf ball out of all of Vice's range, and it's meant for people with a little bit faster a swing speed, approximately over 110 miles an hour for that driver swing speed. Now, if you're in that category, make sure you watch on, because I'm gonna test this against the other big brand golf balls and see how it gets on. Now, because of the weather, and because of Storm Alex, Storm Barbara, the clock's going back, I am now inside at Gray's Golf in Lewis. An uh, amazing custom fitting venue, and it means I can get all the data that I need and see how this Vice Golf Ball performs. I'm going to be hitting primarily a 7 iron and a driver and compare it against the other big brand golf balls in the main factors such as spin, durability, distance, and just overall how the ball feels. First up, let's put the Vice Pro Plus against the Titleist Pro V1. So first up, let's talk about the design of both golf balls here. Now, the Vice Pro Plus golf ball, you can tell is a bit more modern in its design. Now, the alignment tool is a really helpful and still quite a minimalist approach to what people kind of like using in their putting and anything else. You can see the Titleist Pro V1 doesn't have this. I'm not saying this is a negative because the design they have has been tried and tested over several decades and it works. But the Vice Pro Plus is a little bit more modern and for someone who in 2020 likes that modern approach, I actually do prefer that. Now, one massive thing to note here is the customization of Vice Golf. Now, you can see on this golf ball that we have the Golf Magic logo on it. Now, you may think this is something that just companies can do, but no, this is something any single consumer can do with any sort of logo or design that you want. Now, you may be thinking that this is not new at all and that other golf clubs can do this, but what recently has been happening in, is that Golf clubs themselves have been able to do it. You may see ones with St. Andrew, with Manchester United, but you haven't been able to customize it to your specific design. Vice Golf now offer this, which is something very new to the market, and if you take advantage of it, you can personalize your golf ball to anything you want. As well as this, Vice Golf have separate colors and designs you can put on the golf ball itself, which I'll put into in separate videos. For testing, I used my Callaway Apex MV6 iron with dynamic gold X100 shaft with 0.5 inches longer and two degrees upright. So completely custom fit to me and the results I should be getting are pretty optimal in terms of the spin rate and distance. First up, I used the Vice Pro Plus golf ball. Now I hit a lot of shots with this golf ball and the Pro V1, so eventually my results were tiring after hitting 50 to 100 golf balls of just a six iron. So the data I got was more or less from the first 20 to 25 golf balls. The main thing that I noticed with the Vice Pro Plus golf ball was how great it felt when you hit it straight out the middle. With the Callaway Apex MBs, you can obviously tell if you hit it even slightly out of the toe and slightly out of the heel. But when I hit it straight out the middle, it felt superb and it rivaled any other golf ball that I've hit in 2020. I'll put the data up on the screen now for my average with my six iron. So as you can see, my spin rate was more or less exactly what I wanted it to be. And my distance was pretty good, an average of 192 yards. Now, I know I can get more than this if I use other six irons. I will say, obviously, the Callaway Apex MB is less forgiving, so the sweet spot is a lot smaller. If I use some irons that I've used previously in testing, such as the Tailmade P790, I'm sure I could get that up to the 200 yard mark. But what's the most important here is dispersion, and I was pretty much dead on here with about five to 10 yard dispersion on this map area. Now onto the Titleist Pro V1 golf balls. I hit the exact same amount of shots as I did with the Vice Pro Plus golf balls. So it's the exact same type of data that I'm getting here. I'll put the data up on the screen now to compare with the Vice Pro Plus, but as you can see, it's more or less exactly the same. For us amateur golfers, there's not too much to differentiate here. I'm sure if you're a professional or tour player, there's some stuff you could scrutinize, but for me, they were both pretty similar. So it all comes down to feel. For the Pro V1, I felt like my dispersion was a little bit better, 
but I could feel the worst strikes a lot more consistently. Now, I don't know if this is because I'm hitting the ball a little bit worse with this ball, but either way, I could definitely feel it a little bit more when I was hitting it out of the toe or out of the heel. The range for the Titleist Pro V1 was a bit worse than the Vice Pro Plus. The range was about 10 to 15 yards, which isn't bad, but it was a lot closer for the Vice Pro Plus, probably about five to 10 yards. But again, with the Vice Pro, my dispersion from left to right was worse. So it's kind of swings and roundabouts for this one. Now with that, let's move on to the driver. For the driver testing, I used my Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero in nine degree, which is tweaked down to eight degrees with a Project X 6.5 shaft, which is 76 grams for low spin. Now for this testing, I'm sure you can see by the footage that my dispersion was all over the place. Unfortunately, this is pretty normal for my uh, driver swing, so I'm not gonna read too much into that. It's not the ball's fault. I'm not gonna factor in either of these because the, these were both pretty dreadful for me and it was just because there were a few factors involved. I did these after the iron testing and in the simulator, I haven't really ever swung in a simulator like that for a good year or so. So it's a bit different to swinging outdoors. I'm sure a lot of people who have, who have tried this before um, can familiarize themselves with this. So there's a few things that are a bit different here. The ball speed as well. If you've watched my previous videos of super speed training and the Strix and driver review, my ball speed there is about, let's say 10 miles an hour faster. That's because I'm inside, it's a little bit different and I did hit the irons before, so I was a bit more tired. But nevertheless, the data is still completely tangible and I can uh, reference both to each other. Now, I'm not going to compare these too much together because what I felt like is that these golf balls pretty much were exactly the same for the driver. There wasn't really too much difference. It was somewhat similar to the iron testing in that I did feel that the Pro V1, when not struck out of the middle of the club face, was felt more through impact and usually span a lot more with the results. The average for both golf balls, however, after testing was pretty similar. You can see, with me putting the data up on the screen now, that the Vice Pro Plus is actually up in distance by seven yards, Ooh. which, when comparing two premium golf balls against each other, is a significant increase in distance. If you look at this data a bit further, you can see that the Titleist Pro V1 spins approximately 500 RPM more than the Vice Pro Plus. The Pro V1 is the ball that spins more out of the Pro V1X and the Pro V1, so if the Pro V1 would be substituted in, the RPM would drop to fairly similar results as the Vice Pro Plus. But nevertheless, for the driver, I definitely didn't feel that much of a notable difference for an amateur golfer between these two premium golf balls. Now, why is this so important in the practicality for the Vice Pro Plus? Let's get back to the studio where I can talk about this in a bit more detail. So I'm back at home now and let's just talk about the data that I got on the day of testing a little bit more. So with my six iron, you can see it's pretty much the same. My club head speed, my ball speed is all pretty comparable, but I did get a one yard increase. Now, it's not too much to talk about here technically, but it's still a one yard increase. It's still an increase from a premium 2020 golf ball for the Vice Pro Plus in the Vice Pro Plus's favor. Not too much, but still something. Now the driver, I kind of glossed over it a little bit initially, but 305 yards to 312 yards. That is, in percentage wise, not a lot, but seven yards is actually a massive, massive increase from golf ball to golf ball. If I told a tour player that they could get an extra seven yards out of their driver by changing to another golf ball, they would change on the spot. Now, I'm not saying that every single person may get seven yards increase, but myself personally did, so I see no reason why you shouldn't get the same increase. But why is this so important? Let's jump onto the Vice Golf website where I can show you a little bit more. Now, as you can see, I'm on the Vice Golf website here on the UK version. So I'm gonna go straight to the golf ball that I use on the day of testing, which is the Vice Pro Plus White. You can see here, there is a lot of options available. I'm gonna go through those in some separate videos, so stay tuned for those. So go into the Vice Pro Plus White here, and what I'm immediately gonna draw your attention to is the right of the screen, where it says £2.49 a golf ball, which goes to £149.40. So if we take this down, it goes to £3.19 a golf ball, which goes up to £38.28. So what Vice is offering you here is if you buy more in bulk, you get it a lot cheaper. How much cheaper? So if you did get it as 60, £2.50 a golf ball would work out to about 30 pounds a dozen. 
Now, I will say as well, if you are in another country in Europe and in the States, you can actually get this price for even cheaper. So, let's put that into context and show you how much the Titleist Pro V1s are. So as you can see, I'm on one of the main UK retailers for golf balls, golf clubs and everything. And what I'm gonna do is go to the Titleist Pro V1s, which you can see are right here at 42 pounds for a dozen as a discount from an RRP of 52 pounds. Now, when the 2020 Titleist Pro V1s come out, they will be at 50 pounds a dozen. So the difference that you can see here is about 12 pounds a dozen from an RRP if you get a box of 12. Now, if you get more, if you buy in bulk, if you buy with a friend, you can save considerably a good 25 to 35% over the 2020 and 2019 premium brand golf balls. It's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Because Vice Golf and Titleist Pro V1, I've just shown you the results of the testing that I did, and they're not too dissimilar. In fact, they're a little bit in favor of the Vice Pro Plus. So I'm always gonna recommend the Vice Pro Plus. Then going on to the price bracket, of course, if you're just buying a dozen, there's about a four pounds increase from the, to the Titleist Pro V1. If you're a Titleist Pro V1 user, and I know a lot of you are, it's the most popular ball in golf, it's gonna to be tough to sway you away from it. But I really do think there's so many reasons as to why you should try the Vice Pro Plus. It rivals against the number one golf ball for 2020, 2019, going back several years at a fraction of the price if you buy with a friend or in bulk. As well as this, the company's flexibility to offer you customization, various colors, and overall really modern feature throughout the golf ball is so refreshing to see in comparison to other golf balls throughout the years. Now, what I haven't touched upon here is durability. Now, what I'm going to do in a separate video is test the Vice Pro Plus golf balls in the variety of designs and colors against other main brand golf balls. So stay tuned for that. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Up next, I'm going to do the Callaway Chrome Soft True This and see how the Vice Pro Plus reacts to that. I'm also going to use a different Vice Pro Plus design, so it's going to be a different colour. If you guys enjoyed this video today, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for future content of golf balls, golf equipment and challenges. I'll see you guys at the next video.